Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Today, I am going to talk to you about Jodi Arias. And who is Jodi Arias? Well, hold up real quick. It, let's just say that um, every Monday, I'm going to now be posting a, I guess, weapon chat or whatever on a true crime story. I will be uh, posting on my Instagram so that you can vote which story you want. I'll have, you know, from two to pick from, whatever. And then you tell me which one you want to hear about. <laughs> this is all new to me, so it might change later on. The day may change. I don't, I don't fucking know, okay? We're just doing this. I'm just doing this, okay? Anyway, let's talk about Jodi Arias. If you don't know who this is, she is a psycho. But um, why is she a psycho? Well, let's begin in her early childhood days. I don't know why I paused there. Okay, so Jodi Arias was born in Salinas, California on July 1980. She did have some siblings, but I'm not going to mention them because they weren't a huge part of her life. Um, and it's not relevant. So there isn't much about her childhood. Uh, her childhood years but she has stated that she was abused by both her mom and her dad uh, starting at the age of seven apparently she would get hit with a wooden spoon and belt and at the age of 10 um i guess it just continued on i guess whatever i don't know what else where i was going there um but you know to be honest with you i, I you know i mean really was that really abuse if you got whooped you know I don't know, but anyway, um, at the age of 10, she also showed interest in photography and that would carry on throughout her adult life, which to think about it now gives me the goosebumps. So hold on to that thought. Okay. Okay. All right. So Jody went to, okay, so this is, this is the high school that she went to, but I like literally didn't know how to say it. I was saying Eureka. But apparently that's not how you say it. So um, this is how you say it. Wairika. Okay. Um, it is spelled <laughs> Y-R-E-K-A. So yeah. She went to Wairika High School in Wairika, California. But she didn't finish school. She actually dropped out in the 11th grade um, to move out with her boyfriend. Okay. And I'm just like, bruh, you were almost to the finish line, really. Um, anyway. She held some part-time jobs and also did some photography. Again, goosebumps. Okay, this whole photography thing gives me goosebumps. Uh, okay, so early romance. Mm, let's get saucy here. So in 2001, Jody began working as a server at the Ventana Inn and Spa Resort in Carmel, California. This is where she met Daryl Brewer, the food and beverage manager. They were um, both living under staff housing. And they started dating thereafter in 2003. At this time, she was 21 and he was 40. You know what? Whatever floats your boat. He said that he liked her because she was responsible, caring, and a loving person. So I guess I, I should say, uh, quote, uh, I liked her because she was responsible, caring, and a loving person, unquote. So the relationship flourished and they decided to purchase a home together. This happened in 2005 in Palm Desert, California. So, I mean, I guess they were serious if they, you know, bought a house together. Uh, so years passed and in 2006, Jody began working for prepaid legal service. So, so you know, PLS. She had also kept her server job. So she basically had like two jobs. While doing all this, she was also involved in the Mormon church by hosting and, um, I guess, just going to church and hosting these Bible study classes or whatever at her place. So she was, like, really into church. And the breakup. Okay, so this is when we start talking about the breakup because they did break up. Um, in May of that year, she told her boyfriend, Daryl, that she didn't want a physical relationship with him anymore because she wanted to practice what she was learning through the church and she wanted to save herself for her future husband which to me makes no sense since she had had a very physical relationship with him like come on girl really and then on top of that 
around that same time, like, she got breast implants. So it's kind of like, what? Anyway, not that that has anything to do with her being Mormon or anything. But it's just, like, really odd. Like, she breaks up with him and then she gets breast implants. Like, okay, girl, you do you. Uh, so anyway, so she was with Daryl, but it wasn't physical. Okay. So as she became more involved with her job at PLS, she became financially irresponsible and she uh, defaulted on her financial responsibilities. Since she bought the house with Daryl, they both pitched in and she was like, eh, I don't give a crap anymore. It's all you, boo-boo. So since this relationship was obviously not going anywhere, they decided to split up. And also, well, yeah, she wasn't paying for the house. So, like, he was like, what the fuck? Um, he wanted to move away to Monterey to move closer to his son because he had a son and she didn't want to so they split um I mean I'm, I'm pretty sure there was like more factors into this but we're not gonna go there uh he left and she stayed behind in the house and at the end of that year in December the house went into foreclosure and she got the hell out okay so how did she meet her victim her victim's name was named Travis Alexander um so Jody met her victim <laughs> or the victim her lover um Travis Alexander at, at you know the place that she worked at he was a motivational speaker and sales representative for prepaid uh services which remember she worked for there was a prepaid legal conference that both her and Alexander attended. Boom. This is how it all started, okay? It was said that Jody, she's 28 at the time, and Travis had a strong sexual attraction to one another and immediately hooked up, a.k.a. had sex, a week into meeting. Okay, I'm not judging. I'm just like, damn, man. They, they were like, hey. And she was like, what's up? And they were like, let's fuck. So anyway, Jody... How did, okay, so how did Jody look, though? Like, apparently this girl was hot, okay? Like, all the guys wanted her. Um, you know, according to people who knew her, said that she was beautiful. She had blonde hair, which is not her natural hair color. They said she was carefree and sexy. She was everything a man would want. Um, and, yeah, that's what, like, everybody would say. Uh, the relationship. Her relationship was Travis. Uh, this is, so, here's where it all starts, okay, to go downhill. Um, Travis lived in Arizona and Jody resided in California. She seemed to be stuck in Cali. Okay. Cause she like literally never wanted to leave. So she kind of like just made it her home. Um, so when Travis and her weren't traveling together, they would talk on the phone every single day and exchange emails, which by the way, after, uh, the investigation to future events, they exchanged 82,000 emails. 82,000 emails, <laughs> okay? Um, so anyway, she got baptized on November 26 of 2006. And about three months later, she began dating Travis. I mean, she was like really into him. She moved to Arizona where he resided. But was it serious? No, because the relationship lasted four months. <laughs> so four months, guys. Okay, so as I was doing this research, I... Like, literally was like, what the hell? I had no idea that they had only dated for four months. Um, you know, if you do your investigation uh, on this story, you would you would have thought that they were dating for like, I don't know, two years or something. But no, it was just four months, okay? I'm shook. Okay, so weird things are happening. Okay. So before the breakup in June of 2007, both of them seemed like a great couple at first. But then things started shifting. Friends of Travis would later state that they felt something was off about Jody. I mean, it got so bad that they even told him they were concerned for his safety. Red flag. Um, if your friends tell you that there's something wrong, you should listen to your friends. Uh, they noticed how, to uh, how toxic she was. Um, and a friend of Travis even told him, quote, Travis, I'm afraid we're going to find you chopped up in her freezer unquote um yeah what the hell always trust your friends folks always trust your friends so um they you know they break up right but they still continue to have sex okay 
that was until Travis began dating this other woman. So here is where it gets cray cray. Sources say that she was really jealous. Okay, Jody was really jealous to this fact and began harassing both him and his new girlfriend. Like she apparently slashed his tires, broke into his home, um, through like the doggy door, which is like what the fuck, and sent threatening messages to both Travis and his girlfriend. Okay. Um, I didn't look into what those messages said, but I mean, like, that's crazy, right? Um, so then the year is 2008. Okay. We're, we're going forward and the month is March. Okay. These two still kept in contact. They still traveled together and would still have sex. Okay. So much for saving herself, right? Cause she says she, she didn't want to have sex until she was married. Well, you know, that she was lying she's lying <laughs> she was like his dirty little secret jody of course got tired of being the side chick so she went back home to california even after everything they still kept in contact and they both would send each other sexually explicit messages and pictures um so let's let's go further into the future after what happens okay because obviously he dies but um in court when they were you know when she was up on the stand because they put her on the stand they literally so I don't know why she would record her conversations with Travis but she would literally like they would sex talk and in the courtroom they played that tape and like she's like moaning and it's like so awkward because this family's right there and she's like covering her face because she's embarrassed but it's like what the hell it's it was crazy you guys you guys got to go and watch that video <laughs> okay okay so anyway um so from what i have researched he didn't like her anymore and he didn't know how to break it off with her my guess is because she just kept going after him okay poor guy he had told her countless times that he wanted nothing to do with her but she just didn't get the point um, but why was he all of a sudden not interested in her, you know? Yeah, she was obsessive, but what was the actual reason for not sticking with her? Well, um, after doing my research, I found that he did not see her as wife potential because she was not a virgin and he knew he was sinning. He wanted to marry a virginal, pure Mormon girl. And by having sex with him, she eliminated herself in being wifey potential which, to be honest with you, like, if, after everything, like, if you didn't like her, you shouldn't have kept contact with her, you know? It was kind of like, oh, I don't like you, but hey, let's do it. Wait, hold on, you gotta leave now. Wait, no, come back. Like, you know what I'm saying? It was, I mean, I'm not saying that validates what she did, but it's kind of like, they were both toying with their emotions, you know what I'm saying? Um, so apparently, Travis had a, he was going to Cancun, okay? And instead of asking Jody, he, at, of course, you know, asked his girlfriend because he's dating this girl. And Jody found out and she was like super pissed off. Okay. Like she was like, what the fuck? Um, so anyway, at the time, Jody was living with her grandparents. And in May of, tw uh, uh, in May of 2008, May 28th, 2008, um, a 25 caliber gun was reported missing from their home. Okay. And obviously that's like the grandparents gun and they reported it because like you don't just not report a gun missing, you know. Um, so on June 4th, 2008, Jody went on a trip to Utah, uh, but took a detour to Arizona to visit Travis. So the thing is that when she was going to Utah, she was actually going to go visit her like boyfriend or something at times she was talking to some dude i don't know who the hell he was but she was gonna go visit him and she was like mm, i'm gonna go to arizona okay so who lives in arizona travis alexander okay uh prosecutors say she was she had arrived unannounced but jody states that she had been invited anyways jody and travis end up having sex alex jumps into the shower yeah. Travis Alexander jumps into the shower and Jody grabs her camera because remember she is a professional photographer so of course she has her camera and she begins to take pictures of Travis as he showers he knew what she was doing because he is posing in these photos that they later you know saw on her camera 
And yes, these photographs are online for you to see. So if you Google um, Travis Alexander shower pictures, it's going to show you his pictures. I mean, you can't see anything from like the waist down, but it's like very eerie because of what happened right after she took these pictures. Okay. Um, and so, yeah, uh, it, it is chilling because right after those pictures, she murdered him. So literally, um, it said that she began stabbing him like right after those pictures were taken. And the reason that they think this is because her, like she dropped her camera and it like, it took a picture of him without her even knowing that it took a picture of him lying on the floor bleeding. Um, so let's go back to June 5th, okay? This is a day after she murders him. Um, Jody continues her little trip to see her mystery man. Uh, keep in mind that she has just murdered her ex and she goes on her merry way to see this other man, okay? So it was like, oh, I killed him, but I'm still gonna go on my trip to see this dude. You know, she, she didn't give a shit. Um, so, okay, anyway, June 9th. Okay, so it's a couple of days later, June 9th, guys. Um, friends of Travis go to his home because they have not heard from him and they are worried. They go into his house and they go through the garage and they call out for him, but he, they don't get a response. They proceed to the bathroom where they find him lying on the shower dead. His body had been there for five days days okay no one had found them for five days so his body was there for five days can you imagine how he looked being dead that long like okay so i actually googled pictures when i first heard of this case years ago and to this day i highly regret it it traumatized me okay um if i were young i wouldn't look them up because they are online and it's like super super sad um later it was said that he had been shot in the head with the 25 caliber gun okay which obviously is the one that was stolen that Jody stole from her grandparents but they didn't know at the time that it was her um, he had been stabbed and slashed 27 times it was so bad that she had almost beheaded him because she cut his throat open yeah I mean she did a number on this guy um, all fingers were pointed at Jody of course as a possible suspect by Travis's friends. When they questioned Jody, she denied ever being in his home. Okay. But get this. This chick left so much evidence that she was there. It was unbelievable. So first off, her handprints were all over the crime scene, okay, which had both her and Travis's DNA. Police also found her camera inside the washing machine. Like, bruh, really? She threw her camera inside his washing machine to try to destroy it, okay? That didn't work, obviously. Investigators were able to recover the photos and discover the images she had taken of Travis moments before he was killed. Some photos even feature images of his bloody body that had been accidentally taken when the camera fell on the floor. Crazy shit, right? How shit happens. Um, okay, so when jody was interrogated she stated that two masked murderers had broken into his home and murdered travis she said that she had hid she ran and hid right after they killed him and it was actually a man and a woman and she fought with the woman okay and she said that when she was fighting her finger like twisted or something and it like it became deformed which she tried to show in court but they were like nah bruh like you're dumb and they had evidence that um, her finger was fine because she had taken a picture of herself with her sister um, after the attack happened apparently and her finger was fine but when she's showing it in court she like kind of makes it look like it's broken like come on no you're dumb anyway um, so she said that they were fighting whether or not to let her live and they and she just like ran out okay so that's what she said she said that it wasn't her that she was actually there but it wasn't her. But then she changed it, okay? She was like, wait, hold on. They're getting on to me, so I have to lie again. So then she told investigators that she had killed Travis in self-defense. She stated that she felt like her life was in danger because he had knocked her to the ground in the bathroom where there um, was a struggle. Her lawyer claimed in court that um, had she not killed Travis, she would not, quote, 
be here today, unquote. Jody Arias was found guilty in 2013 for the murder of Travis Alexander. Then in 2015, she was sentenced to life in prison. She did not get the death penalty at her sentencing. And then like at her sentencing, she said, uh, quote, I wish there was something I could do to take it back, unquote. Which to me is kind of like, really? And then it's so cringeworthy because when you're watching this, like she brings up like this, um, she tries to act like the battered wife, okay? Like she has battered wife syndrome. And she kept saying like that it was self-defense. And then she brings out like this t-shirt that she made. And she was like, well, if you like to donate money to like domestic violence. And it's just like, what are you doing? Like right after she was found guilty, she did this. And it's kind of like, well, I mean, you know, but were you really <laughs> like, you know, was he really beating you? I don't know. In a way, all, all evidence proved that she was wrong. Okay. Um... <laughs> So the case is like really sad because, you know, like this guy, poor guy, you know, he was, I mean, he, he, I, I feel like he shouldn't have toyed with her, but at the same time he didn't deserve to die, you know? And like the, the case was really big because the media kept sexualizing the trial. Um, I mean, they were like, like I said, they were showing these, these video recordings of her moaning and like sexing with, uh, Travis and it was just like, you know, it was really big back then. <laughs> They're like, what the hell? Um, and it's really odd because if you watch any of the court videos of her trial, she looks like a normal, like, basic chick, you know? Whereas people were saying she was this sexy, seductive woman. People even stated that she looked like a nerd in court. Like, she had her glasses and, like, brown hair. Like, she looked nothing. Like, um, like she looked when Travis met her, you know? So was it, like, all an act? You know, was it... Like, was that really, like, I think she wanted attention. People, a lot of people were saying she wanted attention from men and she got it. Um, I think that this was just pure evil and jealousy. And then like, there's this video where she's in prison and she's singing, Oh, Holy Night. And it's like so damn bizarre. Like really, like, really, like you're crazy. Right. Um, so where is she now? Uh, she is currently, she is currently at the maximum security unit of the Perryville prison for women in Goodyear, Arizona, and she is 39 years old, but she's going to live the rest of her life in prison where she deserves. Um, okay. So anyway, uh, what are your thoughts on this case? Uh, do you guys want to know more about it? We can write in the comments. I think I got everything, um, that I needed <laughs> to talk about this case. It's just fucking crazy. Uh, let me know what you think, if I should change anything about this little new, um, I guess, what would you call it, segment I got going on, this new content. Okay, remember, every Monday I'm doing this now, because I can. Um, Alright, that's it. Give this video a thumbs up, and I will see you in the next um, saucy time crime. I don't know, crime time? Saucy time crime? No, wait. Saucy Crime Time. Yeah, that's actually really good. Okay, that's what it's called now. Saucy Crime Time with Ruby. All right, bye guys.